Throughout the world, more people are living longer and healthier lives as a result of globalization and worldwide economic development. However, with the advent of new drug therapies and surgical procedures, countries are now being faced with problems associated with aging societies. The United States and its estimated 80 million baby boomers are seemingly at the forefront of what may develop into a devastating global battle. Fortunately for the U.S., new technologies in the area of disease management may support the demands of a growing elderly population. It is believed that disease management will transform delivery of care by putting the individual patient at the center of their own care, tailoring their health services to specific personal health conditions. Implementation of disease management will not only reduce the burden of work levied on the healthcare system, but it will also reduce avoidable adverse health events associated with hospital admissions, increase quality of life, and drastically reduce the amount of money spent among elderly patients. Ninety-nine years old. I'll be one hundred in two and a half months. How's that feel to almost be a hundred? Same as ninety-nine. Never, never, never did I think I'd live so long. I couldn't even think about ever living so long. I, I, I don't. I'm a little frightened. I don't know. I don't know anybody was hundred. Is there a change? Is there a change? Yes. We're on the threshold of the first ever mass geriatric society. And it is in many respects really a wonderful time to be old because people are not only living longer, but they're living healthier into their 70s, 80s, and in some cases even into their 90s. That's the good news. Unfortunately, there's also bad news. Data from the Census Bureau records reveals that between 1980 and 2004, the United States population over the age of 65 has increased by more than 10% and promises to sustain its bulk. As a result, debilitating chronic diseases such as heart disease, hypertension, diabetes, and arthritis have increased in prevalence among the elderly. These chronic diseases have required internal medical and other specialist attention, which consequently led to a 33% increase in healthcare expenditures between 1992 and 2002. Additionally, it is believed that our healthcare system won't have the resources necessary to provide adequate long-term geriatric care in the future. With fewer doctors now available to care for the rising number of elderly, many worry we're on the verge of a national crisis in care. Nobody's bothered to think about what the repercussions are of trying to keep people alive longer and longer. Another bypass surgery, another transplant, without anyone worrying about how do you get them physical therapy? Will they ever walk again? Can they swallow their food? You know, it's not a very thoughtful way, I think, of providing health care. With the aging of the baby boomer generation, annual per capita health expenditures began and continued to rise at an uncontrollable rate. Corporate America's concern about escalating health care costs prompted Blue Cross, Blue Shield plans, and other insurers to pay closer attention. As these groups began to organize and analyze health information, a developed understanding of the associations between disease patterns, health status, and health care costs emerged. The data revealed surprising trends. Among the findings, one revealed that about 5% of the individuals in a commercially insured population typically accounted for 50% or more of the group's total health costs. This emerging understanding propelled case management forward into the mainstream of medical management and health plan operations. In its first form, Disease management focused on patients who had already incurred some type of catastrophic health event, like a stroke or heart attack. The hope was that by increasing monitoring and management, the afflicted individuals would be less likely to relapse. These first steps suggested that with proper individualized attention, 
healthcare providers could efficiently improve their patients' health with the added benefit of reducing overall cost. A developing understanding within disease management recognized that not all patients with the same disease may have the same medical needs. New methods proposed that by identifying individuals at high and low risks, patients may be more efficiently assigned to appropriate care management programs. Many of the elderly patients classified at high risk usually suffer from multiple chronic diseases. Although the highest risk patients only constitute 1% of the population, they typically account for 20-30% to 30 of total health care costs. Consequently, in the event that an individual is identified as high risk, they will receive more intensive health care attention. On the other hand, low risk individuals may require less intensive health care attention because of their lowered vulnerability. Low risk patients are more likely to be healthy and usually suffer from less dangerous diseases. For this reason, low risk patients require less medical attention. Identifying risk allows for more efficient allocation of healthcare resources as well as improved personal care to the individual. Disease management has proven itself successful in improving our healthcare system. In 2003, research by Isham and Kramer found that disease management achieved a 25 to 30 percent decrease in per member per month cost for high risk individuals. This statistical finding was the first proof that disease management was working. Additional research found that disease management also significantly reduced the number of admissions among patients stratified into these high-risk groups. In a disease management study on diabetes patients, it was found that there was a 16% drop in hospital admissions per 1,000 members. Furthermore, high-risk members saved 3% in per member per month cost, while low-risk members saved an additional 20% on health care costs. These clinical and financial improvement findings are evidence the disease management practices may be the solution to a growing elderly population. Starting disease management is an interesting way of combining the telephone and the internet so that patients and physicians and their office nurses can communicate with each other on either a daily or a weekly basis rather than waiting for that every three month office visit or waiting for some crisis. The web-based system helps doctors and nurses monitor a patient's condition. Lily, for instance, logs her weight weekly and calls it into a computer. Her nurse tracks the results looking for unanticipated changes and reaches out to patients on a regular basis. Mr. Smith, this is Pat over at the Heart Center. How are you doing today? It makes the patients actually more comfortable a little with their disease and uh, makes them feel that there's somebody out there looking out for them and helping them. 